Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're having a really great day. Today, my friends at Sideshow have asked me to take a look at this. And this. <laughs> and this. That's right. It's the V, male and female versions, plus the Yaiba Gusanagi bike from Cyberpunk 2077 by Pure Arts. Let's see how they turned out. Greetings. All right, first up, as always, let's take a look at the packaging. And the first thing that jumps out at me, obviously, is the color. That day glow yellow really, really pops. It jumps out at you in a way that few other packages ever have for me. Uh, it's really bright, really bold, and it's punctuated on each one by an image of the figure or the vehicle inside in sort of a scan-lined NTSC formatted monitor that we're used to seeing in a lot of old school anime in general, and which we also see a lot of today, even in the Cyberpunk Edge Runners animated series that's out right now on Netflix. Uh, but just looking at how cool both of these characters look, I love how when you put the boxes side to side, they kind of look like they're a team, like they have each other's backs. Even though we're talking about the same character, obviously, in the game, I just like that concept. The bike, the Yaiba Kusanagi, the fastest bike in the game, really, really jumps out at you. If, if, you're, if you're a fan of the game, if you've experimented with this game at all and you've had experience with this bike, then you're gonna see this and just be like, ooh, I gotta have that. Really looking forward to seeing how it looks on the inside. Other things about the packaging that really caught my eye are the contrasting spot colors, like this contrasting red that lines the bottom of the images, as well as the contrasting blue in the Cyberpunk logo. Really, really attractive. Really keeps it from being just, you know, a two-tone sort of, of, an, of an effect here. I really like this blue going on right here on the bike. I'm I think there might be something interesting about that once we get to the inside. Other things that leap out at me are the fact that you have a Night City silhouette going on in the background behind here in all the packaging. Uh, so that's really cool. Coming around to the side, we got the Cyberpunk logo on this side of the packaging. And uh, I think that, yeah, that's just, that's unique to the motorcycle box. And around the back, of course, you have the Samurai band logo, which is, uh, that's kind of a interesting Interesting little choice there. I dig that a lot. Uh, around to this side on the bike, you see you have the legalese who've done it and whatnots, uh, and just more of the same. Everything just kind of wraps around. By the way, all of these things exist in sort of a slipcover format. If I can just lift this up, you can just see that that just kind of slides off. So the yellow with the Night City silhouette still remains, and the character itself, itself is on the clear plastic slipcover. Uh, that's about it. But as much as I really dig the packaging on these things, I'm really interested in what's inside. So let's go ahead and get these things on the table, opened up, and see how they look. All right, here we see both figures still in their clamshells, exactly how they're gonna come to you. And they come with a respectable number of accessories, all very relevant to the game. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually gonna start over here with this base, just because I really, really dig the texture on the thing, as well as all these different technological elements that have worked their way through the pattern on there. You can see that the Cyberpunk 2077 logo is emblazoned right there in, in like a metallic, like a, like a brushed aluminum sort of a thing going on there, uh, which actually kind of nicely reflects the metallic paint that's going on on the front, on the top rather. And uh, yeah, I dig that a lot. I can't wait to see how that looks with the figure displayed on it. But enough about that, let's move on to the figures themselves. I want to start with the female. You can see that a lot of the elements on these figures are identical. The jackets are pretty much of a similar pattern. They're just, one is cut for a female body and the other one is cut for a male body, obviously. What I'm really digging here is the downscaling on the pants. It reads really, really well. I'm, I'm especially digging the denim effect going on with these jeans here. It looks really very much like what that scale of denim would look like. Um, ending, of course, in these awesome, awesome chucks. In fact, let's just go ahead and break this guy out and get a closer look at him out of the box. Bring him up, just put him sideways here just so you can get the full figure in the shot. Uh, you can see that uh, there's some really, really nice paintwork going on on his facial hair. That's always a make or break deal. If you can pull off the facial hair, then everything else just kind of falls into line. Um, moving around to the back, you can see that the fade that happens here at the back of the neck is equally good. So they really, really got that right. Uh, let's get some closer look, a little, little closer look at the details on this jacket. Loving, loving, loving the tr the uh, the demon head going on right there, as well as the samurai bit. Uh, there's a little bit of body armor going here, going on here on the shoulders. That's, that's 
actually kind of nice, really slick. I wouldn't mind having a jacket like this. Uh, there's a light up effect that we'll get to later going on in this collar here. You can, if you open up the jacket, you can actually see that there is a place to put your button cell battery that comes with the figure. Uh, he's wearing what appears to be, I haven't taken the jacket off yet, but I'm assuming that it's a t-shirt, but it might very well be a tank top or a sleeveless muscle shirt. Um, check out that decal. Yeah, the decals, they're a little bit slightly raised. There appears to be a button right here on the front of his jacket. And yeah, that's it for that jacket. Very much a bomber style jacket. I used to have one of those a long time ago. And of course, ending with these really cool Chuck Taylors. Check a, take a look at that, at that tread. That's pretty awesome. Those shoes look really, really good. Now let's take a closer look at Female V. Again, similarly, we've got some nice paintwork going on here in the hair. And that's uh, that, of course, as I said, is crucial. I uh, love the tones. There's, there's very real depth and texture to this hair, both in the paint and in the sculpt. Works really, really well. Uh, the eyes just look like committed. Just like, just like, just there's like this dead stare going on right there that looks, reads very much like I would expect a cybernetic or organism to read. Um, open it up so you can see she's wearing a really slick tank top here. Has a sort of a synthetic uh, fiber effect going for it. Which reads, reads really, really well. And again, like I said, all the details on the jacket between each figure are identical except for the cut. You have the same decals going on back here. Uh, you have the same armored bits on the shoulders. That's just a slightly different cut. What I really dig though is these pants. These moto pants are really, really freaking cool. And uh, all the all the tech, all the texturing that goes on, they're very familiar to somebody like myself who rides motorcycles. And of course we have really slick chain around her waist. Looks like we got a carabiner here or two. Yeah, looks like two different types of carab carabiner. That's an interesting look. And some platform boots, platform motorcycle boots. Hmm. I'm starting to lean toward this one on the bike. <laughs> now each figure comes with a nice complement of weaponry as you would expect from a game like Cyberpunk 2077. This, of course, is the Militech M10RF Lexington. I'm sorry, the Militech M10AF Lexington. Well, it's just like a standard issue sidearm. Uh, just get a closer look at that there. You can see that there are some very nice details going on there. Uh, the paintwork is really crisp. The lines on the sculpt are equally crisp. It reads very much like a downscaled version of a full-size pistol like that one a lot. Up next is the G58 Dian. This is a a smart gun, if you will. This actually this gun will actually pretty much aim for you. As long as you get the gun close to the target, the bullet's going to find its way home. Uh, really cool that there's a couple of interesting elements here that it actually collapses a little bit, as you can see. And the stock will fully extend, which I really, really dig. This part here will actually come off. I don't know why you'd want to. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on. And uh, yeah, that's it. Very Again, just like with the pistol, there's a lot of slick design going on here. Very crisp lines. Very, very much like this gun. Moving on to the male's unique weapon. This is the M2067 Defender, and it is a beast. Look at the size of this thing. You've, it's so beefy in real life, allegedly, that you have to have the grips mounted on the side of it just to maintain balance. Really dig that. It's just a, it's such a monster of a BFG. Uh, the stock, again, will slide out just like it did on the other weapon, and the bipod will fold down so that you can actually, you know, use that for its purpose, if such is your design. But flipping it over, you can see that there are quite a few cool decals and a lot of styling going on here. Overall, I really, really like the look of this gun. I'm glad that they selected this one to go with the, uh, to go with the male V figure. It's very, very cool. All right, moving on to the cybernetics, the male version has this awesome, awesome mantis blade fully deployed from the arm. Look at how cool this looks. This is one of the really, really cool bits of the 2077 game that actually managed to transition into the, into the animated series as well. But I really like the way that this looks. It's genuinely creepy and genuinely cool. Um, man, <laughs> I don't know if this is something that I would do to my own arm, but dang, if it doesn't look slick on this figure. You can pose this arm in a variety of ways to the extent that no matter what you wanted to do, if you were photographing a figure, you would be able to catch a good angle with it. And I really appreciate that. Looks like the best way to put this thing back into the box is to actually put the blade in first and then make the adjustments to the hand and arm as necessary. Now the female V comes with two arms, which is kind of cool. Um, she has one that's pretty much fully assembled here. You can see the outlines there in the paint illustrating where the separations are going to occur when the arm finally starts to de deploy. And then when you come over here, this one has actually begun to deploy its cybernetic elements, and that's a really cool effect. 
Another thing that's unique to the male version is this spider drone. And look how fully posable it is. You can do all manner of things with this thing. Storytelling options are right on point. Uh, genuinely creepy for somebody like me who's not really terribly fond of spiders. But uh, yeah, very, very welcome addition. I, love, I just love having that represented from the game. Also noticing that they actually added an additional elbow joint for the male, so that's that's always welcome to have spares. I enjoy having that. You can see that they added some additional hands for the figures here. Some of them are actually proprietary for holding the various weapons, so that's a very cool feature to have. Can't wait to implement all these things in a posing session, which I'm going to do in a few minutes. But first, I want to get everything off this table and get that bike out here for you guys to see, so let's make that happen. Whoa! <laughs> this thing is everything I wanted it to be. Okay, you guys, check this out. This is really, really super awesome. You can see the, you can see the bike here in the clamshell. I don't even know why I left it in the clamshell because it's legitimately one single piece. It's just there for protection. It's not like there's, there's a, a plethora of parts that need to be shown as well. It's just the bike and that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I just, I didn't want any plug and play. I just wanted play and play is what I got almost because there is actually a battery compartment underneath there that has that needs uh, three AAA batteries. I'm sorry, two. Yeah, two AAA batteries, and I've already installed those in there, so we're good to go on that. Um, so, yeah. But while I've got this thing in my hands, let me just go ahead and, and try to show you guys some close-ups of the details on this bike. Would you look at that? It's amazing. It's amazing, and you know, fans of not only. Not only fans of Cyberpunk 2077, but fans of anime in general, and you all know what I'm talking about, have got to appreciate this. It is a thing of beauty. Let's just go ahead and flip it around here. This, this I've, I actually kicked down the, I had it out of the box earlier, so I kicked down the kickstand a little bit just to lean it over there on it, just for kicks, but that's, that's, that's a movable part right there. The wheels obviously spin, that's pretty slick, just, I love the look of them. I love the mud all over the all over the back of the wheels. I mean, okay, granted, the mud would not actually be on the back of the wheels um, in that in that way, but you know, I can forgive that. This looks this looks really cool. Just imagine that it's actually been sitting there and somebody drove by and splashed some mud on the wheels if you want to. But man, it's just the detail on this is just blowing my mind. This is the thing to own. I'm seriously, this might just be my favorite toy of 2022. Look at this. Chromanticore. <laughs> all the all the great little like sponsorship stickers <laughs> as if this thing's actually been been raced on a pro track by somebody. Oh man, just the I I just can't get over this. This is it. But anyway, oh yeah, look at these. Look at these stickers here. Look this look at that. Ah. Sponsor Chiqui that's a Chiquita banana sponsorship. It's not it's not is it really? Conchita, it's, oh my God. Yeah, they were just trying to duck that, but it's beautiful, beautiful. Of course, the samurai sticker right there. We gotta represent the band. That's cool, cool, cool. But seriously, if I was gonna be taking anything out for a spin to go to, I don't know, Afterlife for a cocktail, then I, I definitely drink and get on the back of a motorcycle. It's, oh, this is my, this is legitimately my new favorite thing. And you can see, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you this here. But there's a um, there's a sticker right here that covers up, and I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off because I'm gonna have to anyway. But I can just show you guys that the sticker comes off. There's a little flap. There it is. Boom. It actually tells you where the power switch is. On off the power switch. So what you do is you uh, I don't believe I can have this thing upside down for this, but yeah, it's um, yeah, the on off button is right there, and when you click it, then you get your light up feature. There's your headlights. Right, and you flip that around, and you got your solitary tail light. I mean, here, let's try the front angle view on this, but just so you guys see just how cool this is. And that's all that it really needs. Oh, look! Instrumentation lights up! <laughs> oh my god, I'm like a kid with a new toy here. This is amazing. Look at that, look at how cool that is. Here, look, before and after. Like, like, off, on, 
right? Oh, there's even, I didn't even notice, but even down here in the corner near the mirrors, there's something that's lighting up there as well. Oh, jeez. And again, let's just go ahead and do the on-off comparison for the uh, for the main camera there. But, I mean, I just love this. How simple of a creature am I that I'm getting such extreme joy out of a battery-operated LED light-up feature in a, in, a, in a beautiful little bike. Oh, God, this is just so cool, guys. I mean, seriously. Okay, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's... That's, that's not... Oh. Here, this is what it looks like when you put it over here on the kickstand. Fastest bike in the game, right here. I would have had one before now, but I didn't have 22,000 credits. <laughs> you can just buy this in the game. You can buy this at Sideshow, and you can buy this in the game. This isn't like something you have to jump through a whole lot of hoops for. This is just a really... A, do you even buy it? Yeah, you buy it with your credits, obviously, but it's like you just have a very simple task. You just have to go pick it up. That's it. And you can have this, the fastest bike in the game. You can have it in the game, and you can have it on your shelf. I know I'm being really repetitive here, but... <sighs> License plate. I could spend the next hour just talking about everything that's on this. Look at that. There's, yeah, again, that, just, just as I was just saying, there's a license plate on it. Look at how gorgeous that is. I'm just gonna slowly just do a slow turnaround for the overhead camera. And just show everybody just everything about it. I mean, it's. Oh, look at it. Why am I doing this without the headlights on? There we go. Bring that up. And I need to get this thing onto a onto a turntable for you all and just do like a showroom style rotation on it, right? Because it's this is the sexiest six scale toy I have ever seen. I'm enamored with it. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and spin the wheels. Spin the wheels, spin the wheels, spin the wheels. Spin them, spin them! All right, they're gonna have a hard time getting this back for me, I can tell. So that's it, that is it. Oh, what is the best angle for this? I, I don't even know, I don't have a monitor up for this for, for this angle here, I'm just, I only have it up for the overhead, so I can't really tell, but. Here, here it is from one side, but this would, I think this would legitimately be the side that people would display it on. Look at that. Did you see what happened there? It has suspension. It has suspension. <laughs> That's fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> I'm losing my mind over here. I'm losing my mind over here in a way that I haven't in a long time. Oh gosh. Okay. I love this bike. I love this bike. All right, that's enough Enough of my just gushing about this thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the figures out of the boxes and get a posing session going on and incorporate the bike into it. So let's do that. So I'm going to use the BFG on this guy just because it looks really, really cool. Um, I'm sure that you can do a lot of cool stuff insofar as like getting this guy into some really cool dynamic poses, dropping that pistol into his hand and just have him doing some really cool action stuff. But again, for this one pose that I'm going to be doing on camera here, I thought we'd just go all in and just see how good this thing can look. So let's start. I would just want to play it safe and actually get the hand onto the gun first. This may work, this may not. Sometimes this, this works better, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm thinking that given the unwieldy look of the gun itself, that it might actually help me a lot to have this done. So anyway, that's the right hand, so let's go ahead and pop this off. Mm, look at that. That's a pretty unique thing right there. I've never seen a hand wrist peg set up that looks like that before. That's kind of cool. Um, hard to break one like that. So that's, that's kind of a welcome addition, very cool. Let's go ahead and get that swapped out. And put that in there. And let's see, I'm gonna to need to be able to move this this way. So let's go ahead and get that wrist peg into a proper position. And then slide that hand home. Okay, so this isn't gonna be a dynamic pose. This is gonna be a cool pose because a lot of this game is kind of about being cool. 
Um, so let's go ahead and swap out this hand. Oh, that came right out that time. That's cool. All right, so let's get this over here. Bring this up. Notice that really slick proprietary hand for cupping this thing. Right. Yeah, neat. Awesome. So that goes in there quite nicely. <laughs> in fact, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little bit guilty about not making this thing more challenging. Um, but uh, that guilt will go away as soon as I get her on that uh, on that yoga. So let's go ahead and cock his hips out a little bit this way. I just want to get him kind of like turning a little bit this angle. And I'm just trying to think cyberpunk um, anime overly exaggerated postures. So let's go ahead and arch that back a little bit more than I normally would. There we go. And then bring that head down to compensate. And then at the end of this all, when we're finished, just go ahead and bring this up a little bit to see how high I can bring it. Break that line a little bit. Then we can turn these lights on. And won't that be cool? So little switch is right there. All right. So the whole notion is that he's kind of at attention on guard with this gun in his hand and he's just turning around and checking out the area around him. He's just like on guard duty, maybe? I don't know. This is cool because you can also take this and bring it in and have him hold it with that hand. That's a, that would be fun as well. Anyway, so let's go ahead and leave that like that and move him over here. Because now it's time. I'm just looking at all this stuff that's, that, that belongs to this guy and he, it's just gonna be in the way at this point. So I'm just gonna pull this out and let's bring in the female bee. So we're not gonna need the stand because we're gonna put, as I mentioned, I'm gonna try to put her on the bike in a pretty cool way. And for that, what I'm gonna need is this gun, I think, yeah. Oop, I hid the hands, there they are. I need the pistol grip for this hand and I'm gonna need, I think, the handlebar grip for this one. So we'll see just how extreme I can make this thing go. Just checking that torso twist, that's got quite a bit of play, that's good, we're gonna need it. And let's go ahead and swap out the hands. Again, because of the enclosed nature of this, I guess it's it's easy when you can like fold this, this piece back here. But normally when a gun is enclosed like this, then you'll always wanna go ahead and put the hand on first because when it's on the body already, it's just so difficult. Because of the breakaway nature of it and because you can extend the stock, then you don't need to do that with this with this gun, but we're not gonna have it posed that way because she's gonna be wielding it one-handed. We're gonna have that stock closed all the way. It's just such a cool looking gun. I love the look of it. All right, let's go ahead and get this hand back on her. Ha, first try. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and um, we're just gonna rough out a quick motorcycle pose with this gal and get that hand out there. Oh yeah, I've got one more hand to swap. All right, now. I'm gonna swing this around to this side, even though most of the posing is gonna be done at that side. I just wanna get her here. Yeah, that's working out. All right. Let's lean her forward. See if we can get that reach, and we can. That's great. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's see. Flex it. Oh, that's a stiff hand. Nope. Just kind of gradually, slowly get that hand over there. That went on there quite nicely. And you can see we got our feet kind of flat on the on the, uh, on the foot plates there. So we're off to a pretty good start here with this pose. I'm pretty excited about this. Now the cool thing about trying to do a pose like what I'm trying to do on, on, on a bike like this on the side stand is that you're able to kind of affects like a turn, like she's mid-turn, like she's making a, a left-hand turn there while at the same time doing something with her other hand. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and make a couple of minute adjustments on this just to get her looking solid on the bike. Let's go ahead and bring this gun arm back. You can, now you're probably getting an idea of what I'm trying to do here already. Uh, and it's, it's not something I think we can do in the game, um, but that matters a little to me. Go ahead and get that gun arm up. Ooh, rotate that. Yeah, I gotta play with this. Gotta toy with it. Tuck her down a little bit and get that neck to bend as much as we can. 
I'm just gonna play with the eye line a little bit here. We're not gonna be able to get that foot flat on this side, but we've got it flat over here, and I think that that's enough. She can be a little bit out of whack. Oh, she's not quite turned as much as I would like. So let's fix that. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Just really twist that torso. Get that gun up. And if you tilt her head down, then it looks more real. Oh yeah. Got that. Twist that. Turn that to compensate. Bring it back down. Get some line of sight action going on. Oh, don't fall. <laughs> I think, I think I lost her position on the other foot plate over there. Yep, yeah, sure did. That's no problem. We can just uh, tweak that a little bit. And I've got it so that her toe is held up over here on the brake pedal. Sorry, the shifter pedal over here on the right side. Left side. Let's bring her up. Again, like she's leaning on the bike. So you can imagine that she's actually just riding the bike, not that it's on the side stand. If you wanted to get a pose, of her just kind of chilling next to the bike or him chilling next to the bike then you could but there's no actual need to do that let's go ahead and just do some really awesome gangster style um holding the gun to the side kind of thing there's no need this is this is make-believe we don't need to play by the actual rules of gunplay here so let's just go ahead and tilt her head to mimic that angle right there and then you've got something really cool going on let's get those hands out of the way and bring that fully into frame like she's aiming at female. Make sure that, that oh I think that side stand started to come down a little bit. There we go. And there we go. Done. And of course if you really want it to look cool then you can turn on all the lights on her and on the bike. Right there. Which you really can't see from this angle. But We'll get that on the turnaround here. You see how that foot's there flat against the plate? Yeah, that looks really strong. Really happy with that. Really happy with this, this entire set. It's very, very cool. I'm gonna be completely honest here and admit that I came to the world of Cyberpunk 2077 from the opposite of the usual direction. While I was aware of the game, I had no hard knowledge of it right up until I first saw these figures and this bike. Everything about the paint, from the hot rod automotive red of the sleek bearing pieces to the surface efficiency of those exposed engine components, even the leather-like look of the saddle shows an absolute devotion on the part of Pure Arts to doing this bike justice. The splatter effects and the occasional subtle imperfections give the bike character and let us know that it's not quite hot off the showroom floor. The rubber of the tires just screams, smoke me, and the light-up effects illuminate to perfection. The sponsorship decals really round out the show-off braggadocio that lies at the core of Cyberpunk 2077. Nothing can be subtle. Everything from your mods to your guns to your ride is about projecting a persona, and the Yaiba Kusanagi definitely projects. Add to that bike the V of your choice and you've got a sci-fi cocktail of a modern day horse and rider set in the wild west of the not so far flung future. There's a lot of fun to be had with this set and I'm just getting started. That's about it for this video. If you have this set, let us know what you thought about it in the comments below. And until next time, don't forget to let your geek side show. Did you enjoy that video? Be sure to subscribe by hitting the S icon on your screen and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.